This is the 2.5, Conversations Connecting Innovators. My name is Klaus. Jen Zuner and Ann Keller have found a home in Fruda, Colorado in the US, a rural town of approximately 12,000 people in the Rocky Mountains. They have built their home on great pizza and mountain biking. And they have built a large community. Over 15 years ago, they saw the necessity for a place for people to come together and took to work. Their vision was to create a place to hang out before or after hitting the trails, to welcome people, have a good time, share stories. Their hot tomato place is not just any of the 77,000 pizza restaurants in the US. They have developed their own very special recipes and ways to do business. And many people get it. If you look at the restaurant's many ratings of the more than 10,000 fans on Facebook, you see only praise, basically all five stars. Some random quotes are, best pizza ever, best employees and atmosphere too. We love this place. Great, yummy, delicious, amazing. This list could go on and on. Okay, let's do some more. Awesome, love, perfect pizza. Even the leftovers next morning were good. I mean, who likes cold pizza? It takes lots of innovative spirit to get there and a way with people to build such a great community around it. This got me interested in the hot tomato, besides the pizza. Welcome Jen Zuner and Ann Keller from the Hot Tomato in Fruta, Colorado. Hi. Thank you. Hello. Hi. I, I'm I'm really in a good mood right now because I just watched Life of Pi. And, uh, <laughs> well, you might not be on the slopes all the time, uh, but it looks really impressive, the place that you have chosen to, to stay, to live. Yeah. Yeah, we have a beautiful place that we that we found our home. It's pretty awesome. And I think that's a, a really, really, really interesting uh, thing that you found your home uh, in a way. And I want to go into this uh, um, later uh, because that's, I think, a very, very important thing to have in life, to find your home. Um, I am, I'm really excited about uh, our conversation today um, because when I think of you, I have to smile It, it works every time, every time. Uh, I think it must be the pizza. So, uh, Jen, your email footer says something like, pizza queen, hot tomato, ride bikes, eat pizza. And I was wondering, Anne, Anne, are you like the pizza empress or the empress of coffee or mountain bike wizard? What's your title? Oh, wow. You know, I've never come up with a title and I probably should. I've just left that up to Jen. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kind of the quieter person in the background. Maybe she can be, she can be the queen. <laughs> She's the quiet queen. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. It is something that you basically, uh, you share the kingdom um, of, of hot tomato. Yeah. Of pizza, yes. We, yes. <laughs> When you wrote me uh, uh, your last email, you said you had a really, really fantastic 2019. What made it so special for you, 2019? Was it like Life of Pi, the movie with Patagonia? Yeah, I think uh, I think the the movie just uh, I think it sparked a lot of interest in a lot of people. And so we got to meet a lot of new people and we had a lot of really wonderful opportunities come our way since the movie came out. We had a lot of fun working on the movie and I think being able to really tell our story in, in a humbling way, I think it was really, uh, it was, it's been really moving for us. And we've seen that through various people that have gotten in touch with us since the movie came out, whether it be coming into the restaurant and talking to us or emailing us. Um, but it's been really, really wonderful. And then, you know, all of that, you know, turned over into our sales. So we, I mean, we just had a, a really great year uh, on the, on the business side of things, um, which was awesome. Our staff has really stepped up because Ann and I have been given a lot of opportunities since the movie to go 
go around the country and do some pretty cool things that we've been able to take advantage of. And our, our team has been really solid and, and keeping it all going for us, which has been really wonderful. So I think when you put all those things into the big basket, it was just a really positive overflowing basket of awesomeness. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. A big overflowing basket of awesomeness. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed. So, so you build a really solid business and um, people have started to notice it and um, and and uh, and it, it, you get a much bigger traction now but uh, we are in 2019 2020 now yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and <laughs> well uh, looking looking at at uh, when when you came to to fruta uh, that was in 2002 so let's like yeah. 17 18 years ago and I was wondering what made you go to rural fruta in Colorado? Well, we, we had, we spent quite a bit of time second guessing that decision. Um, it was, we were both in Moab, Utah, which is about an hour and a half away. And at the time, Moab, Moab has since had an explosion in trail building and they've built some really wonderful single track trails. But at the time when we were there, they, they just didn't have that yet. And so most of what you rode was the Slick Rock Trail or Jeep Trails. And Fruta was this new emerging destination. And so for the from a mountain bike angle, you know, Fruta had all this single track. It had this great scenery. It was you know, pretty similar in geography to Moab. It was an hour and a half away. And, and they had these narrow winding trails that were a lot of fun to ride. And, and Moab, you know, just had these Jeep roads at the time. And so from a mountain bike perspective, you know, here was this emerging destination. But from a town perspective, it was a very small, rural, quiet town. And, and I definitely remember, you know, speaking for myself, like there was a, there were a lot of moments where We, we had these internal dialogues of, you know, what are, what are we like, can we live here? This is, this is a really small town. Like there's, <laughs> there's not a lot going on. <laughs> um, are we going to stick this out? And because we had like five friends and they all worked at the bike shop and that was it. And <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, we, we questioned that decision at first. We okay. definitely did. Uh, the, the potential for, at least for looking at it from the outside, for that to, to be to to develop your home is just it seems very small in the beginning. So it sounds like a yeah. very courageous idea, a thing or to do. <laughs> yeah, oh. well, you know, we had spent a few years there, and at that point, um, you know, we we had debated about leaving. There were there were other towns that we were looking into moving to, and. Unfortunately, with Colorado, some of our really desirable destination towns were, for us, really priced out. Mm -hmm. And so we, we couldn't move to the Durangos or the Tellurides or the Steamboats and some of these just, just awesome resort towns because we just couldn't afford to. So it was a little bit of a financial choice also to stay in Fruta. And, and at that point, after a few years you know, you start to get a little bit more committed to a place and, and you start to feel a little bit more rooted to a place. And so we were, we had been in Fruta for three years when we opened the hot tomato. And, and at that point we felt like, okay, maybe we can stick around here a little bit longer. Did you ever imagine that you would have nearly as many Facebook friends as people live in Fruta? <laughs> <laughs> every single not. one of them we're friends with every <laughs> single person in Fruta <laughs> yeah. uh, like our Facebook page you get a slice of pizza yeah <laughs> yeah but if I look at your Facebook recommendations I see only praise and let me quote some random pics um, best pizza ever, best employees and atmosphere too. We love this place. Looking <laughs> great, yummy, delicious, amazing, <laughs> awesome, love, perfect pizza. Somebody said even the leftovers next morning were good. I mean, who likes cold pizza? 
<laughs> why do we try? Yeah, but why do people <laughs> love you so much? Pizza? <laughs> I think. It's, I mean, to uh, be to to be fair, we make some people mad. <laughs> Go ahead, Jen. <laughs> we do. I was going to say, I think uh, I think the pizza has a lot to do it with it. I think the atmosphere and the feel of the place, the employ our employees, our team are absolutely amazing. They show up every day and and are their best selves every single day they come in. And I think when you throw all that together, the experience that people get is why we get those great reviews. I think it's the whole package. I've read that you come from uh, New Jersey, uh, Jen. Um, yeah. You, so you're, this is where pizza is big. And uh, yeah. I, I hope the Italians don't mind right now. Uh, yes, it's big in Italy, but it's, it might be even bigger in, in New Jersey. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be right. <laughs> um, so, so that's kind of like part of your DNA and, and pizza is like a natural choice, I suppose, if you would open a restaurant uh, with such a background. And uh, now you have yeah. opened uh, a coffee place. Is that something uh -huh. that comes from Seattle, your Seattle background, Anne, or is it <laughs> just yes. coffee is great? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, we, um, you know, we felt like there was a, a bit of a void in the town for a coffee shop that I was used to, which the West coast takes coffee very seriously. And when we moved to Fruta, you know, there are, there are local coffee shops, but I felt like there was room for something that really pushed the craft of coffee. And that's how we became involved in the idea of opening a coffee shop. Cause, cause we were there for a few years. And at that point, well, we'd been there for a number of years at that point and, and no one else had opened it. So sometimes you, you wake up one morning and you say, well, if no one else is going to open it, um, maybe we should open it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah, coffee. I, I have a strong connection to coffee. Okay. And it, it's actually something that you, that you, that you can serve all day. You can be open all day and there can be people coming to get going to the slopes or, or coming back from the slopes and have a place to, to sort of come back and, and talk about the, yeah. the daily adventures. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. That was a big, that was a big part of the whole vision of both the businesses is just have, giving, giving a third place to people, you know, you have your home, you have your work, and then you have the place you want to go hang out in. And that was, that's always been really important to Anna and I is just to make sure that we, we welcome everybody who walks through the door and let them hang out and let them have a good time and share their stories. And, and that's such an important thing. Uh, I, I think that's th third place. Uh, in like 20, no, 50 years ago, you would have thought of like happy hour bars with uh, cocktails right. and little umbrellas and stuff like that. And people would get <laughs> hammered on the way uh, back home. And it was yeah. okay. Uh, driving with alcohol uh, 50 years ago was <laughs> normal. Now times are different. Now you, you, you arrive with your bike, uh, you're sort of stressed out because it was such a great uh, uh, physical adventure in the mountains um, and stuff like that. And, and you don't really drink that much alcohol anymore, but you sort of enjoy uh, life outdoors. And I, I think yeah. that's what you do also. You enjoy that life outdoors. Yeah, Absolutely. very much so. I think, that, uh, I think that's what keeps us going is the, the love for the outdoors and And giving each other the opportunity to get outdoors, whether we're together or separate, just to go out and play. And I think it just really settles us and soothes us and, and you know, lets all those ideas that come in and out of our heads, you know, either go away or come back and you can write a vision around something new. So I think being in the outdoors is, is really, really critical for both Anne and I. Yeah, for sure. And the people in your team, they also catch that outdoor bug? Some of them, for sure. I think, yeah, I think a good chunk of them, for sure. Um, but, I mean, where we live, you can go, you know, pretty close to town, and just even if you're just going for a hike, and definitely all the staff are, are hikers or bikers or on the river. A lot of guys climb. There's a lot of different things going on, which mm -hmm. has been really great. You said you develop the, these ideas when you're, for example, outdoors, when you, you throw back uh, some ideas, uh, some keywords, and you, you have a good time developing that. And you have a, you started with a vision also. But then you also say that you are um, around um, 
the country uh, with the with the movie for example and and uh, the people the team is is running your place the hot tomato and yeah. uh, best slope coffee yeah uh, so yeah. how did they how did you make them understand uh, what your vision was how did they understand that and how did they sort of internalize that in a, in order to be able to run the place the same way as you would do it sure um, I can we, we can both chime in on this because this is something that's really important to both of us I think a lot of it starts from clear communication of that vision and our expectations around it um, obviously hiring the right people is, is crucial to that. But I think when you're starting from the, the solid place of kind of defining that vision and then working from that, you, you do tend to hire better people that, that fit that culture and, and align with your vision. And so that's been, that's been a pretty enormous thing for us is, We can't expect anyone to get on board if they if we don't communicate what what we want them to get on board with, and then we also can't expect anyone to get on board if if we ourselves aren't on board. And so it it takes, you know, it's it's a humbling experience to have a good team and to have a strong vision and try to align yourself with it because it it's uh, you know it means that we admit to our mistakes. It it means that we say sorry. Um, And we, you know, we try to be human in the most kind of gentle way possible. And so I think when you can give your team a little bit of that graciousness, like they, they are more willing to get on board and you start to surround yourself with the type of people that, that truly live out that vision. Jen, you should add to that too. That was great. Um, I also <laughs> think that, uh, you know, it's always hard to, figure out how to explain that to people. But um, I think the other, the other piece, just to piggyback on all that is just leading by example. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like whether we're, whether we're in there all the time or whether we're popping in, you know, this year we've just popped in a lot, which has been really weird for us, but you know, we're, we're okay with, you know, doing the dishes and sweeping the floor and, and taking out the trash if that's what needs to be done or, jumping on the line and making some pizzas here and there, you know, we're, I think we're there, we're our team's biggest cheerleaders and we're their, their yeah. biggest uh, coaches, you know, we're just, we're really trying to, to coach them and lead them not only through the values that we have within our business model, but in life in general, and just try to be there for them and help them, you know, learn and be, be the best that they can be no matter what it is that they're doing. You know, a lot of the, a lot of our team, they're, they're in college or they're in high school and they're, they're just trying to figure out life. And I think when they see us in there really working hard, they, that, that becomes a value to them. And so I think all of that ties in together with, you know, the vision and being servant leaders and trusting our team. And like Ann said, saying you're sorry, And saying thank you and saying all those things that are so important um, that, that keep everybody bought in and on the same page. I think it's it's a really important piece that a lot of places unfortunately miss. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons too. We a lot of our team sticks around for a long time, where our employee rates are probably four to five years before anyone leaves, which is amazing. It's al it's always really nice too when they cry when they leave. But you're probably also crying a bit when, when people leave. Yeah, yes, absolutely. It, we've so created like, a, a little family, and you know it changes every few years with new people coming in and out. But I think every time you walk in, you still have that heartfelt moment that people actually really care about what they're doing, and that's really really important. Mm. I I have. Um, Uh, been organizing a, a TEDx event for 10 years and uh, uh, every ev event we had a, a different group of, uh, of young students uh, participating in, in the organization of the, the event. And so now we have built a real 
big group of like over 40, 35 people that are sort of telling me all the time what they're doing and they're keeping me updated. And it's it. really nice huh. to, to have cool. something like that. Yeah, I can I can feel yeah. that uh, a lot. I mean, we're not as close as, as you are. We didn't uh, have uh, all the stress of making pizza on a, a Saturday evening. Uh, but, <laughs> But uh, I, I can feel that uh, a lot. It, it brings you close together to do something like that and have such a, a humble, um, what's the, the word, a humble um, image of, of uh, that, that you live, you, you're a role model. Yeah, that's the right word. Yeah. Somehow I got the impression that... Um, you do the thing your things differently uh you do things differently you do different pizza recipes for example you probably have some some classics but you have your own recipes and it's not the classic pizza that you get everywhere with uh, it's like mushrooms and cheese or whatever you you put peach <laughs> on. it's just very very different uh -huh. what you do so you have your your own way of doing business um And uh, sometimes that is kind of difficult to find what it is, define what it is, and then also communicate that to the others. And it might take an extra bit to communicate it because the others don't get it yet, or maybe the, the idea is not ready yet. What's your, your experience here? Hmm. Are you always ready? Um, Is your vision always ready, formulated, so you can pointedly give it, uh, tell it to somebody else? If you there have are elements of it. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely elements of it for sure. Um, I think when it comes to recipes, it's it's a pretty broad spectrum. We wanted it to fit within the framework of we wanted to deliver a quality product. Um. So, you know, you're a little bit beholden to price uh, parameters when you're dealing with pizza, right? No one's going to spend $50 for a pizza. And so, you know, sometimes we might not be able to use all of the ingredients that we'd like to use and go super crazy on our ideas. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, like we want it to be you know, decently affordable for people uh, and also taste really good. So, coming up with new recipes is really fun. Um, I really enjoy that aspect of it. And we're actually, we, we sit down and kind of look at that every year. We're going to do a little bit of work with that over the next couple of weeks and see if there's any new pizzas that we want to put on the menu or new salads. So we, we definitely try to change up a few things. We have a few standards that'll always be on our menu because they're just so popular and like we really just couldn't get rid of them. But then, yeah, we do try to keep things fresh, and I definitely enjoy that element of it. I, I'd say if you know if we could kind of condense this to a nutshell, like we, you know, we want to, we just really wanted to deliver a quality product, and that that's our goal with everything that we're trying to do in there is is make something that tastes good, make something that can be consistently replicated each time, even if it's a busy Saturday night and just makes people happy, tastes good at the end of the day. Yeah. I think the key to that is being able to make it and replicate it on a busy Saturday night because mm -hmm. there's a lot of recipes we've come up with that are just mm -hmm. great. If you were only going to make a couple <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not have to, not have to be making, you know, right now to be a, to be a pizza maker and to be on the line on a, Friday or Saturday night, you have to be able to make, um, how many pizzas is it an hour, Anne? <laughs> It's uh, 30 pizzas 30 an hour pizzas for an a hour. pizza maker. Wow. But we have multiple pizza makers. Mm -hmm. So it, it gets pretty tricky <laughs> when you start yeah, putting I, more and more ingredients. Um, I remember so that there was, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jen. No, go. You remember. Um, I was going to say a couple of years ago, Bon Appetit magazine, which is I, I definitely follow they they had named their best pizzeria in the country and it was this pizzeria in philadelphia and 
it's legitimately really good. But at the time they were in a really small location and they only made 44 pizzas a day. (laughs) And I remember reading that and just being like, damn you. Like if that's all we made, we would also be the best pizzeria in the U S you have such a luxury when you're that small. (laughs) Well, um, it just depends on who you ask. I, I think there's like hundreds and hundreds that would say you are the best pizzeria in, in, in the US. So just ask other people. <laughs> it's okay. Our, our favorite pizzeria in the US also probably only makes like 40 pizzas a day. So <laughs> we, can, we can pass that. We can give that title to someone That's else. That's true. That's true. <laughs> You, you could make a perfect pizza day uh, where you serve just 40 pizzas and, yeah. and then experiment with the recipes and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Totally. People would kill us. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, uh, perfect pizza, uh, perfect ride, um, now the perfect coffee, I suppose. <laughs> At least. Yeah. Trying. You're trying? <laughs> Yeah. Um, what else do you want to do perfectly? Huh. There's so many things. Um, perfect's hard, but we're going to keep trying to perfect perfect. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we have a small bakery in the coffee shop right now that's doing really well. And we're working, our next step is we're working on ice cream. Mm. So... That's that'll be the the trifecta, if you will. I think for our little area in Fruta, mm-hmm. if we can nail that, I think everybody will be even a little bit happier. Mm-hmm. And then other things that Ann and I have on our plate is we just want to continue to ride our bikes and to help other people with small businesses and help them be more successful in in their endeavors. And we we have some opportunities right now to work with some smaller companies and help with some consulting and various things of that nature, which I think we're both really excited about as well. And who knows what happens next? I guess it's all just a big adventure. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, wow. So, so you're keeping yourself really busy. Um, <laughs> um, is that also because of your like an age thing i mean i'm 50 right now and uh, i'm trying to to do to cram stuff in a day uh, to, because somehow it's it's something i have to do right now i for me i don't think it's an as much of an age thing as it's this you know we were 15 years into the hot tomato and it took us a long time to get where we are and mm-hmm. we learned a lot over the years and we see a lot of people in their thirties and forties that are trying to do this thing that is really cool, but they don't have the resources to really get it all the way there. And we feel that we can, we can help in some of those things. And so I think it's more about just trying to help our friends and people that we've met along the way, just be able to have the time that we now have the luxury of having to, to do some other things, because I think Ann and I both have a lot of, things in our heads that we would like to continue doing and doing well. And we finally have the opportunity to do that, which makes us really excited. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to, I want to help my friends that have businesses get that business up and running where they're profitable and they're not stressed out as much as we have been over the last 15 years doing this. Um, Really. Right. It's really, really speaks to us to see that we can, we can go out and ride our bikes and not have to be, in our restaurants every single day we put our work in and i think we've found the balance in that and i think that's been really another another reason why we've been so successful not only professionally but you know within our relationship and within for ourselves i think it's a really important piece that a lot of business owners get so busy in their business they don't have the time for that right true it's just business, 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 and sometimes yeah. um, the the business partners are, are married, and then they talk about business all the time, and then there's no life at all left over. 
Uh, right. Oh, that's that. that's pretty easy to happen. <laughs> yes, and it's yeah. but it's dangerous. It's very very dangerous. Yeah, yeah. We do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, and then we had to stop ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you are, you're helping others, is it like uh, you sit down and do some consulting work, uh, answer questions? Uh, do you invest uh, with your friends or is, is there something? Wh wh how does that look like? Do, do your business meetings involve your, your coffee and your pizza? Always. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, a good way to, it's a good way to have a meeting because everybody starts off in a really good mood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but right now it's, um, more, um, working on, you know, just having some seeds planted on doing some consulting mm -hmm. and helping, helping people out. I mean, that's been a really great thing with the coffee shop is we have a partner that we meet with once a week. Um, and he's been really great with running the day to day. And Ann and I have been helping him with his employee manual and hiring people and, having those conversations and looking over his financials. And it's been really cool to see the business over three years. It's a profitable business, which a lot of businesses aren't profitable for a much longer period of time. So mm -hmm. to see that, you know, I look back at the hot tomato and where we were at year three and we definitely were not profitable. So it's, it's been <laughs> no. nice to, to take all the, all the things that we've learned along the way to help people get prop, get profitable sooner. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, that gives them another opportunity to do other cool things as well. And that way you strengthen the community in, in Fruta. Right, right. Right. Okay, cool. But so, so you're helping others? I mean, I'm a consultant and coach and sometimes I, I think I'm helping others, but I, have, I, I can never say I'm helping because people don't want to be helped. They need support, for example, or knowledge or whatever. Help is sometimes a bit in a, 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 weird, way, a weird word uh, for the process. Right. Um, but yeah. but you're, you're helping, you're helping with um, knowledge, training. But what, what I found impressive and, and pretty cool is that you also – accept training yourself uh you you Absolutely. ask for advice you ask for ideas you ask for uh, feedback and stuff like that yeah and i also think that when you're helping other people do stuff i think you have the opportunity to slow down yourself and take yourself out of that equation and so you become more consciously competent about what you're doing and how to communicate it and i know for me personally once i do that i fall back and i'm like Oh, yeah, I forgot I, I can do it this way. It's just like the reminder. You know, it's the same thing when you, we do a lot of uh, mountain bike coaching. And when you're trying to teach somebody how to do a certain task that you just do all the time and you think about it and then you communicate it, I find myself then on a trail thinking about that thing that I taught. And I'm like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. if I just did this a little bit more, I'd be a lot better at that. <laughs> So uh, it's been really cool to take you out of that unconsciously competent place and get you consciously competent about what you're doing. Okay. I see what you mean. Uh, we have a, a, a word where in the place where I live or in, in that state, uh, it's a, like a dialect thing that says something about if you can do it, it's not art anymore. Um, but that also means that you're you're doing things um, automatically, basically, uh, yeah, and you don't question exactly. yourself uh, of how could you improve on it, or would there be a more elegant or better way, a faster way, or a nicer way? Right. And and so this is, I, I'm that's great. So this is also um, you're reflecting on on stuff like that when you go on your bike. I absolutely. Uh, how did you start uh, mountain biking? Um, I mean, well, New Jersey I, doesn't have many hills. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, I was not mountain biking in New Jersey. I grew up, my dad had a bike shop when I was a kid and I grew up racing BMX. Okay. And then I moved away and it wasn't until my, I was a teenager and I started mountain biking. Um, and then just, I think it was a natural, natural progression from BMX bikes to go to mountain bikes. Mm -hmm. And it's it's got my heart for sure so i've been doing it a long time now yeah uh, bmx is rather like an urban thing and um and uh, mountain biking is, is outdoorsy in the nature let's put it that way it might be it's quite right, different right. It's, it's a progression 
Yeah. And so so and in like in in Seattle in in, in Washington did you there's mountains is is that something that how did you start mountain biking? Oh, I, I don't know where she went. We had somebody knock on the door. <laughs> okay. I think, she, I think she's dealing with that. But Anne started mountain biking. I can answer that for her. Um, she started mountain biking and she was living in Northern California and started mountain biking. And she moved to Moab and was a mountain bike guide, sight unseen. So I think she was a pretty, pretty beginner mountain biker when she moved to Moab and then um, took it from there and is now a really awesome mountain biker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but She's hard to keep up with. <laughs> so who is leading um, on the trails, so you or, or Anne? Um, it depends. It goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, but we, you know, we're, we're pretty... Uh, our level is pretty the same, you know, it's, it's pretty equal. And so it, I don't know, we're, we're just like to get out and ride together. It's not about who's the fastest or who's the first. Um, it's just, it's just fun to go out and to see different places and do different things. We're down in Arizona right now, actually, um, living in our van and, and riding bikes, which has been really great and doing some work as well. Sounds great. Sounds great. Yeah. I, I have a friend. She's um, she's also heavily into mountain biking and uh, in in the Black Forest and in the Swiss Alps. And uh, she she just bought a, a van, a camping van, a, a VW uh, camping van, uh, uh -huh. which she uses all the time. Um, she <laughs> is outdoors basically all the time as much as possible. Love it. She loves it. Yes, and she says hi. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Tell her hi back and maybe when we get over there, we can all go ride together. Uh, I'm sure she will be thrilled uh, uh, to show you around. By the way, her name is Alexa and that's okay. I'm not kidding. So I'm sure Alexa well, will be happy to host you. That'd be you awesome. <laughs> okay, uh, so... It is a very important thing for you to to go outside uh, on your mountain bike. Do you? I mean, you probably use it also to go around town, to go to places. Yeah. But would you do something? I mean, I'm not the really really sporty type, so this might be a really dumb question right now. But is it like you get up in the morning and then you want to go outside and use the bike? Or? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, we uh, we have dogs, so I mean, our first. Our first bit of our morning usually consists of a dog walk. Um, and we live probably about three miles from a trailhead. So it's, it's pretty easy to get up and take the dogs out. And then depending on what our work week looks like, I mean, we always have time scheduled to just either go for a longer hike or get out and go for a ride. Um, but I mean, I bet on average we ride three to four days a week. Um, right now we're under snow and so we're not riding at home. That's why we're down in Arizona. But, um, but yeah, we'd like, we definitely are out riding and, and promoting trails and bikes as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So that sport has really picked up a lot in these last 20 years, I suppose. Oh my gosh. Uh yes. Even in the last two or three years, I feel like it's, um, The amount of people we see, you know, Fruta in the last, I think, since we moved to Fruta has over doubled in size. And we're seeing a lot of people moving to town um, for the mountain biking. Wow. That's that's kind of a weird thing for me. Uh, see, in Germany, people probably wouldn't move to another place to do just do sports <laughs> and try to find right. a way to make their money uh, and then sort of hope that things work out okay yeah i think a lot of people are to a point where you know in colorado especially denver is really blown up and so i think people have been they want to get out of the city and so they're selling their properties in denver and they're making a lot of money and they're finding these small cool towns that you know that that have a lot of outdoor recreation and you know we know that outdoor recreation is 
is going to, it's not going to slow down. No. You know, it's not, it's not going to go away. And if there's ways that people can, can, you know, have that lifestyle, I think they're going to go for it and do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's where we are right now. We never thought we would be in yes. this position with the hot tomato of it being uh, so busy with outdoor rec. Cause now it's not just mountain bikers too. If there's, you know, we, we live near the Colorado river. So you have rafters and rock climbers and hikers and campers and road cyclists and skiers. I mean, we have it all. And so it's really, that has really been um, blowing up for sure. Mm-hmm. So you were kind of at the right place at the right time. It Absolutely. Just, <laughs> it just took a while. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, everything good takes a while, right? I mean, if, if that didn't, if it didn't take a while, how good would it be? I mean, we learned, we've learned a lot over the years. We've, we've had moments of failures and moments of successes. And it's, it's really nice to be able to have the opportunity to, to improve upon what you're doing. Okay, but you moved to, to Fruta in 2002. You started uh, uh, the Hot Tomato in 2005. Uh, it took yeah. a, a few years to become profitable. Um, you, you said this, so the start was kind of rough um, in a way, but there was still the mountain biking, okay. But um, why didn't you simply do something else or move on? when you ran into these difficulties? <laughs> Honestly, when we did the hot tomato, uh, we borrowed money from our friends. And I think I always had that in my head and in my heart that I could never let my friends down and I had to pay them back. And I, I kind of often wonder what would have happened if I had just had a bank loan. <laughs> and if I would have just defaulted on the loan during the tough times. And instead I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. So that was a big piece of it on making sure that we were able to pay people back. And I mean, there were definitely moments where we considered selling or we considered closing. Um, I don't know. We just, we just had to figure out a way. I think Ann and I are both, We, we like to be good at things. And so I think we knew that there was an opportunity there. So we had to keep plugging along. And here we are now on a podcast. It's just crazy. <laughs> you are on the, on the big screen in a giant movie, uh, which is <laughs> oh, yeah, really that too. <laughs> a feel good thing. Life of Pi. I will put the link uh, to the movie in the yes. show notes. And I really hope that even more people are going to, to watch it online. It's, it, it's on YouTube. Um, and I think something like this must be kind of life changing. Yeah, I think it is. I think that I don't think that we really had any idea or understanding of, of how, I don't know, how, how many good things have come from this and just, just meeting people and talking to people and sharing our story with people. And we've had a lot of really amazing um, conversations with people around this just because of this movie. And it's, it's definitely been life changing. You know, I think, I think we've had moments where we just have thought, oh, well, we're just a little pizzeria in a little teeny town. And I don't think we realized how many lives we actually touch every day. And that was, that's been a big one for both of us. And we want to continue doing that, mm -hmm. just making people smile and giving them a good opportunity for whatever it is they're doing. Yeah, you created You created the restaurant. You created your your place, Hot Tomato. Um, I think with um, with the observation that a good pizza place was missing in a way, um, and you also created it. I th that's what I've I've read or observed is uh, as a place because a place to gather was missing, and uh, so it it was basically good intentions built in from the very beginning. Yeah, and, absolutely. 
okay, definitely you needed to make money, you needed to pre repay the loan and stuff like that. You have to live somehow, but there's different ways to start something. And if you build in such good intentions um, and uh, are very planned and organized, which I had the impression that you are in a way, but still very, very <laughs> relaxed. This is Anne. I'm back. Hi, Anne. Um, hi. We're like, where did you go? Sorry. <laughs> I had to move a vehicle. Um, we, uh, uh, hold on. I'm leaving again. Jen, you can take this. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's at the door again. Um, I don't know where she was going on that. <laughs> um, I, I think that the, the basis uh, is, is uh, was something else or some, uh, there was more to making money. And this yeah. is what sort of multiplied a lot along the way. And it brought people together because this is what you wanted to have to, to happen. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, growing up in New Jersey, and I say this in the movie, you know, every where I grew up, there was a lot of places like a hot tomato. And so there were a lot of a lot of those feel good places where you needed you needed to, you know, a place to go. That's where you went. And that was definitely really important for me. I wanted the high school kids to come in. I wanted the elementary school kids to come in. I wanted the families to come in. So I think trying to figure out a way to just create that place was really, really intentional from the get-go. And I think you're right. You know, setting that intention from early on, it really set the stage for what it's become. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, you have to be open also for people right if you, if you want to welcome people you have to be welcoming in a way um you might have your, your own <laughs> yeah. rules or or uh right. i've read how you uh, how you organize the restaurant and the lines in the restaurant which is a bit different than others do but it it's very simple to what's happening say in a british pub um right. so so that's nothing new in in a way but it's different to what's what's around so you have your own rules your own ideas but it's still open and you welcome uh, people yeah yeah and and building such a place um what, what, what do you think is is uh, the most important thing for you to uh, sort of make people welcome and and being part of a group of a community i mean it's part of the hot tomato group let's put it that way and part of the fruta community How do you think you can foster that, uh, that feeling? Um, I think you have to be genuine in your acceptance of people. Um, and it also has to be taught. I see a lot of places that assume that their staff will give good customer service to everybody And it's rarely the case if it's not deliberately taught. And I think that that's recognizing that has been pretty key. Mm -hmm. And then again, it's one of those things that has to start from the top down. Um, you know, we, we live in a, we live in a state with a lot of resort communities and it's a, The feeling that I sometimes get when I when I go out to eat in a resort restaurant that just people can't be bothered with you as a tourist. They've seen <laughs> so many of you that they're they're just they're over you. Um, <laughs> and these might be perfectly well intentioned people that are perfectly nice, but unless you have a top down approach that actually teaches good customer service and teaches creating a welcoming environment, the assumption that people are just going to give it is oftentimes wrong. And I, I think that that's sometimes where people miss the mark is they just assume if you hire friendly people, they're going to give good service. And, and sometimes you get that. Sometimes that's the case, but it, it, it is a deliberate practice and it is something that we do talk about a lot. And it is something that we, you know, do classes on and, And so I think the making it a deliberate thing in the restaurant has really helped with that. And then also just setting the intentions from us as the owners that, you know, we're not too good for anyone that walks in the door and mm. we expect our staff to behave the same way. 
no, I, I think that those two things go go a really long way to creating a good welcoming environment. So it's having the intention, being a good role model, and yeah. communicating and teaching. Yeah, um, it's really helping at least to sort of um, share your vision with uh, the people that are you work you are working with. Uh, to make them understand what you actually want to do, plus it's a good. It needs to be. A, you have to make a good selection and, and do some experiments, possibly also with people. Some people might disappoint you in a way, uh, even if they have good intentions, and some others might turn out to be really great, even uh -huh. they didn't think uh, thought so in the beginning. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I've read somewhere, uh, and I quote, you guys are helping change the narrative of this town. So it's Fruda. Um, would, you, would you say that a single restaurant can do something like that? Are you doing it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. This is a terrible question because uh, if you're humble enough, you wouldn't answer. And, uh, and if you're not humble, um, well, yeah. Sorry for that question. <laughs> it's a hard one. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, because I, mean, I think. <laughs> Go ahead, Jen. I was going to say, I mean, I, ho I hope that, that that's the case in a way. I mean, But I don't think that we we should have all we don't deserve all the credit. It's taking it's taken the whole community to create what we've created, mm -hmm. and I think we're just a I think we're just another piece of that puzzle. Yes. And, yeah, you know maybe maybe that is said because we were there from the early stages of of the growth of Fruta, uh, along with the bike shop. But I think every day it takes all of us digging digging in and figuring out how to continue to give people a really great experience, not only when they come into our individual businesses, but when they come into our community. Mm -hmm. I think we're part of a larger, we're one cog in a larger yep. me mechanism that would have, would have happened regardless of us. Absolutely. I, yeah, for sure. I, I think, I, I hope if we could contribute anything, it's that, maybe inspiring other people with small businesses mm -hmm. to see that they could be successful in our town. And I, I hope that that's the type of change that we've inspired is, is to get other people to open doors and do other small businesses, because we have seen some, some growth in that. And that, if anything, is what I hope we could have contributed to, to the changing narrative of town. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're inspiring, and um, and I take a lot from watching your your movie and and uh, sort of getting you as an example and uh, being able to quote that uh, when when I do some discussions or some presentations. Um, I have never worked for somebody who has who is doing pizza, so it's it's <laughs> kind of a difficult example, but it's still. Uh, um, It's it's very inspiring. I think this this pioneering spirit in a way that that is I think <laughs> obvious in, in in you in a way. Uh, I mean, it starts with uh, like finding your own style, your own persona, your your own vision, developing a vision of who you want to be, who what you want to achieve in life, or what you want to start, and and what you don't want to do is is also something something uh, I think uh, a pioneer is, is is kind of doing. So I'm really impressed by you guys and um and i think you're you're, you're actually a good very good role model um so <laughs> so thank you very much for this uh um but was it difficult for you to sort of accepting such a such a role was there a moment where you found out that hey we are doing something special that is different from what everybody else is doing or wanting like for example when you start a small business um you know that you have to do it uh, Uh, because it's not just the money from that you you got us alone, but because you wanted to do it, it was important for you. Or when you started mountain biking, uh, I mean, at some point of time, you would, you had to see that it was the perfect thing for you. Yeah, I think 
I think we're understanding that now. I mm-hmm. think for a long time it was it was this. Oh well, we're just making pizzas, you know. It's, yeah. At the at the end of the day, it's you know we have to have jobs. So, um, I, I think though that since the movie came out, or maybe even just a, maybe in the last few years with with some of the experience that we've had with some of our staff members and things like that, seeing that uh, we are helping people along and we are making a positive difference. I think that that's been a new thing for us that we're like, wow, we're not just making pizza. We're actually helping people along this life. And that's been really positive for us. And I think definitely since the movie came out, we've, we've definitely felt a lot of that. Mm. Uh, Plus it helps it helps to make pizza because everybody loves pizza <laughs> right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's we i i'm distrustful of people who don't like pizza so. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, um is there is there like anything I mean, you talked about some of your your plans and and some something that you're working on now or that that you want to achieve. But is there anything that you sort of regret that you haven't done it yet? Hmm. hmm. Not really. No, I don't think so. Yeah, no, I, I can't. I can't really think. Nothing really comes to mind on the top of my head. Okay. Yeah, me neither. I think I regret that I'm not riding more. <laughs> 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 But that can be changed pretty easily. That can be changed, right? Like in in 20 minutes, for example. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you do you have a like a mountain bikers anonymous group in in Fruta? <laughs> Wow, maybe that's next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, I think in my mind you are innovators, um, and I think the secret sauce is very much in the pizza. Um, I understand the uh, the peach. I would love to try the peach at some time. Yeah. Um, and I really like the way that you do that because there is a time and a place where you offer uh, such a perfect special recipe. And at the rest of the year, even people, when people ask for it, you wouldn't offer it. You wouldn't bake it. I right. think that's perfect. Yeah. It, it works out really well. And I think that's another thing that we are working on for this year is to do more uh, work with more local farmers and vendors so we can get more seasonal stuff in at the, uh, at the quantities that we need to, mm. to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you should definitely come get the peach pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because <I> mean, <laughs> <definitely. laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and I'm and I'm not a fruit on pizza girl, but that pizza is one of the best. Definitely. And I take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm I'm really bad with um with uh, with endings uh, I found out. <laughs> do you want um, us to just hang up we'll just call it. <laughs> oh, where are they going we can just, we can just leave a sense of mystery <laughs> and it says it makes click and then yeah something like that um but um but this is um this is a this was a lot of fun for me and um and i think uh, I, I started uh, the the Innovator podcast because I think it takes a special kind of person with a special kind of mindset to be an innovator. And I see that a lot in you. And I like that. I, I, I'm, I'm very happy to, to, uh, to, to sort of to have that conversation with you right now. And, um, and I'm sure if you, if you ever come over to Germany, um, Alexa will show you around the Black Forest and the Alps and so with awesome. the, the mountain bike. And she will have a nice. lot of mountain bikes available also because she's part of some team. And she's going to kill me right now because I'm not remembering <laughs> the name of it. Uh, but she loves it and uh, she talked to me about it. And uh, I, I understand something about it. 
not much. So so I but I, I I know I can feel that you you feel it so much that it's so important for you, especially after watching the the film. It's it's obvious. So if you come over, please say hi, and and then Alexa yes. will take you around uh, the Black Forest. Awesome. Awesome. Are you aware that we are in the state of Baden-Württemberg? Can you pronounce Baden-Württemberg? Oh, nope. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. I'll work on that before we come over. <laughs> uh, no problem. Uh, nobody can pronounce that. E even, even people here have a problem, at least spelling it once in a while. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, uh, Jen and Anne, this was uh, very special to me. Thank you very much uh, uh, for the time that you have taken. And um, I hope you have a good time on the slopes now. And I wish you the best of luck for all your, your endeavors. And I think it's great that you're doing all the coaching and, and the, the consulting for, for new starting businesses. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so boss. much. This has been great. Yeah. This was my conversation with Jen Zune and Anne Keller. If you are in the area, take the time and visit the Hot Tomato in Colorado. In case you want to deep dive into the Hot Tomato, head on over to the2.5.net and check out the show notes. I have put together a lot of links. Also, you can watch Life of Pi, the movie we have talked about. Plus, there is a transcript and much more to discover please leave a review on podchaser.com slash the 2.5 and help others to find the show. This podcast is hosted in Baden-Württemberg in Germany. My name is Klaus. Thank you for listening to the 2.5 Conversations Connecting Innovators. <laughs>